Hi guys, this is Tim from cctvdesign.com.au. Um, I'm just doing a quick diagram for one of my clients. He wants to cover a shed that's 30 metres by 15 metres. It's got a truck parking area that he needs to cover, rainwater tanks that he needs to cover. It's got power and internet internal to the building and they currently have no lighting at night time. It's in a, a very, very spread out backyard. So I'll just take you through the steps to draw this up. The first thing we'll do is draw the shed outline. So I'm using the, the wall tool. So I've got a 30 meter shed. So I'll click there, go by 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 meters. And then down by 15 meters. So uh, 10, 15, and then another 30 over this direction, and 15 up. Next, we're going to put in the roller doors. So we'll select the cutout tool here. And I'll first of all set its height. So this will be a, um, say, a two meter high roller door. And we'll stick it between there and I'll say about there, six meters wide. And another one from there through to there, again roughly six metres wide, and we've got another one on the end here, from about there down to there. So that should give us our cutouts, and the last one is our personal access door, which will make about 1.8 metres high, and it's just along the edge here. As I'm drawing this, I like to use the 3D window so I can get a bit of a feel for what I'm drawing. So we can see here, the start of my shed, we've got the walls, the doors. And if I just move this camera, I've already set it up to sit about six meters high. I can see quite clearly what I'm doing. So I can now go in and create my rainwater tanks. So we'll draw a couple of rainwater tanks. I've not really been given a dimension on them, but we'll make them approximately five meters in diameter being farming type. So there's one and another one next to it. So I now have my two rainwater tanks in the picture. I probably need to move them out slightly when I look at my original diagram. So I'll just grab them and we'll just drag them down. out there. Okay, and truck parking, I'm not sure if it's covered in or not, but we'll, I'm just going to leave it open and I'll physically drop in a 3D object there. So we'll grab a, a truck, put our truck in here, turn it around, so we now have our truck parked and move it in a bit closer to the building. So we've got a basic outlay of what we need. Next thing we need to do is add the cameras in. So we'll go up here and we'll click to add a camera. We can select different camera types and it really only changes the icon. So we'll just select a waterproof mini dome, name it to camera one, it's gone to camera two because my first camera, which is my overview, was originally camera one. And if you want to put extra notes in there, you can. So we click OK, place the camera roughly where we want it. And then we can spin it around and you'll see in the preview window, straight away we're starting to get a pretty good feel for what we're going to be looking at. So we can see the truck and up the side of the shed here. If I look at my camera installation details, it's mounted at three meters. Now my shed's physically only 2.7, so we'll drop it down to 2.5. And let's make it that we can see all the way up to near the horizon. So we'll go for 2.4, so it's just slightly tilting down. You notice if I go up to 2.5, over here, the region that we're viewing 
is shooting right out to the horizon because we're looking out perfectly horizontally. So just drop that back to the 2.4 and we can change the far bound that it's looking at. Let's type it in instead of scrolling. So we're looking at, uh, I'll say 16 meters just past the shed edge. And we can play around with other aspects like lens size and so forth from here. So we've got a pretty good view there of our truck. Uh, we can see up the side of the shed if anyone's walking through. Let's drop a person in so we can get a 3D view of um, what they look like standing there. So we'll just drop them near this door. And we'll put a different type of person standing at a different spot. We'll grab the tall man and we'll put him just in front of the truck. And those people, like everything else in here, can be turned around and rotated. So we'll click on one, select him and turn him around a little bit towards the camera. Whoop, wrong way. So we get a better face view. Let's turn off the text so we can see through the title. So you can see quite clearly that this is an overview shot. It's never going to give us an ID, but we are basically just looking for overview on this site to see if someone's there. If there's someone we know, being this is in a rural area, there's a good chance of that we should be able to recognize them. So I'll repeat that process for the other cameras. We'll stick one on this corner here. It'll be called camera two. Choose the type and position it. And again, we'll just drag it around. And this one's giving us the view at the back of the truck. Set the mounting height, 2.5 meters, looking near the horizon, about 2.3, and coverage about 16 meters. So you can see here we've got a, a full overlap. It's possible we could do this with one, but we've got a blank area behind the truck we may want to cover, or we may even want to put the camera on a pole out here. Now I find the crosshatch pattern a bit annoying, so We'll just turn that off, and same for camera one, turn it off. And then all we see is the triangular patterns of the, the camera coverage, and we can even turn them off if we want, just clean it up a bit. So we'll leave that one on, camera two, turn the off. So we've just got the straight viewing pattern areas. For camera three, we're going to stick it up here on the shed. So we'll go plus, repeat the process, camera three, camera type, okay. Position it, hit escape to unselect it, drag it around to where you want it to, to look approximately. Set the mounting height, viewing height, now, we can see here that my rainwater tanks are basically out of the view. Those tanks, I didn't actually check the size when I put them in. They're probably about three meters high as the default setting that I, I had, which yeah, it looks like they're about three meters. So you can see we can play up and down with that. Bring the camera width in, and we just want to see through that line. We don't really need to see into the sky. That's only going to upset us with sunlight as it's rising and falling and again we'll drop a person in just as the short boy we'll drop him in there and we'll put the um, the babe up closer in the view so we can see clearly what we're going to get turn off the patterning now one last thing I'm going to show you is this allows us to highlight where different detection zones are going to occur. Let's clear some of things out. So we can see these different markers. They represent the different zones based on this. Now I haven't got them all defined, but I know that if I get into this red down here, that's where I'd get ID. So basically this corresponds to yellow is that yellow, orange is that orangey color, that red there 
is this red, so we're starting to get ID within this vicinity. Now the very last thing we want to do when we're about to give this to the client is make some snapshots. So we can grab the background in whatever view that is at the moment. We'll probably get rid of the layout camera, but we won't worry at this stage. So I'm going to go save as You've got your different formats. For simplicity, we'll just make it a JPEG. It'll pop up a window and we'll do our normal saving. So I've got a choice of customizing things like how many pixels different things are as to how it'll appear on paper. So we'd save that and I'm just going to cancel it because I've already saved it. We can do the same for the camera images. Now something to note here is the physical size of the screen is the physical size that it will save it as. So we can define this. I'm using the light version here. It's different in the professional version. But we can define here how many pixels it is. So if I was working with 4 SIF, that was a pretty good guess. I pretty much got myself my 4 SIF resolution there. Turn that off and save again as whatever and you'll get that as your final resolution with the ability to go in and see what resolution you can zoom into and what you'll, you'll get. So that's it for this little demo. Hopefully that was informative for you and there's plenty more videos at cctvdesign.com.au. Thanks.